All right, so to get started with our DocuSign training this morning, I'm gonna start in command because all of our transactions should start in command. One of the, the main benefits of um, using DocuSign as our e-signature platform is its integration with command that allows us to seamlessly upload documents from DocuSign directly into a command. On top of the fact that DocuSign is free and you don't have to pay for it. So I've gone ahead and I've created an opportunity um, just for time's sake. Uh, if you need more information on how to create an opportunity, we go through that in uh, Take Command 03. So I'm going to go to my opportunity. So on the left hand side, I'll click on the megaphone. Oh, sorry, wrong icon. I'll click on the uh, hands shaking, which is opportunities. And then you see here we have our sales funnels. I personally just like to go to all opportunities and that shows a list of my opportunities that I have. So I've created this one, two, three, four main street listing. I've gone through, I filled in some of the information here. I fill in as much of the information as you know. And then to get started, I'm gonna to go to the documents tab. And this is gonna be one of the most um, crucial parts of starting that opportunity and starting that transaction. Because up here in the top right hand corner, you can see here the start a transaction button. And this is the button that you have to hit in order to connect command to DocuSign. If you start a room in DocuSign, you will never be able to retroactively connect that to command. So we wanna make sure we can take advantage of one of the main benefits. So always be sure to start a transaction. And then in the future, you can always hit go to transaction, which I'll show you later. And it simply drops you right in the room where you need to be. So for today, I am going to use a listing as an example, because I wanna share with you and talk through on the sellers property disclosure, community association, lead-based paint disclosures, because those formats are a little bit different than most of the car form forms you'll be using. So to get started, I'm going to click start a transaction. And you'll see it'll start to think, and then it will open up a new window and log me into DocuSign. If for whatever reason, a new window doesn't pop up, you may have your pop-up blocker on, which happens. Um, and it's been a, been a bin, it has been a sticking point for some agents. And if that happens, you should get a little notification up here in the top right-hand corner, um, just a little box that you know shows that a pop-up has, um, been blocked and you'll want to give command um, uh, you'll want to give command uh, act, our the Google permission to open that um, so Donna the part of the screen on the right side is covering up what you're talking about what's covering up it was covering up when you said go to the right and there's something there that was when you were on documents I in other words, what's covering up is like your all of our names and pictures, that whole area is. So, yeah, so on your screen, um, where you see the, the blocks of the video screens, minimize you it on the minimize button in the top left hand corner of that, and it will shrink that. Okay. So then you should be able to see the full screen. Okay. I just can't see you. That's good. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you don't need to see me. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> yep, you're fine. You're welcome. All right. So now here I'm at DocuSign. I'm going to click continue to log in. Now I've already created my DocuSign account so that we're just kind of breathing through there. If you need help setting up or creating your DocuSign account, let me know and we can spend some time together uh, after this. So when you start your transaction, is gonna drop you right into the documents portion of DocuSign. And then up here in the top right hand corner, you can see we have our name of our room. So it's one, two, three, four Main Street, Starks, Stark Pots listing. That's the same name as the opportunity in command. Now I could change this if I wanted to and it'd still be linked, uh, but just it just shows that it pulls in a lot of the information from the way we set it up in command. And then here we have an ID number this is gonna be kind of DocuSign 2.0, but that ID number would be uh, what you would use if you ever wanna email yourself any information directly into your room. So once we are in DocuSign, and if this is your first time in DocuSign, we need to confirm your NRDS ID number. That number is what is going to give you access to the Georgia Association of Realtor Forms that we all pay to use a license of. If you don't confirm it, 
the system won't know that you're actually a realtor and you won't be able to use those forms. So there's two ways that you can confirm your NRDS ID. The first, and I think probably the most simple, is when you first jump into DocuSign and you're in the Documents tab, you can come up to the right-hand corner where it says Add, click on that, and then select DocuSign Forms. And this window is going to pop up for us with the two uh, logos for Realtor and the Northwest MLS. We'll select Realtor, and then it's going to ask for our NRDS ID. Now, I've only met two agents that actually know their NRDS ID. So, and I imagine if you don't have it off on hand uh, readily, you can click on this link below that says find your NRDS ID. And this will pop up a new window where we can look for our, our ID number using our last name, email address, and or license number. So I'm gonna use my last name and license number. So just type that in. Uh, Perfect, and you see here a green check box, um, check mark, and here's my number. So I'm just gonna copy this, copy, and then I'm gonna close out this window. It doesn't return when you click that, so I'll close that out. I'll paste in here. Now it's gonna, I have to confirm the association that I am a member of, which is the Georgia Association of Realtors. So just look, go all the way to the bottom, scroll all the way to the bottom of the list, because Georgia Association of Realtors is like number 11 or 12 from the bottom and just select GAR, then click validate, and it'll let me know I have now validated two associations. Now, if this is your very, very first time confirming your NRDS number, which it likely will be, you'll have another pop-up right here from the Georgia Association of Realtors, and you just click accept to the terms of those forms. So now um, I have access to the actual forms, but really quickly before we do any of this, I want to show you the other way to confirm your NRDS ID. So I'm just gonna click cancel here. And then up in the top right hand corner where you see uh, either your image or your initials, click on that and then select preferences. And then over here on the left hand side in the menu, we'll click on integrations, scroll down just a bit. And here's another place that we can confirm our NRDS ID number. It'll be blank here and there'll be a link to the right uh, that says find your NRDS number and it'll do the same thing where you can search either your first your last name email address and license number and then you would confirm confirm georgia association of realtors right here so those are the two places that you can confirm your uh, national realtor ds nrds id number do that before you do anything else in docusign so now that we are good to go we have access to the gar forms i'm going to come back to the rooms that i've created I guess I'll just click on dashboard right here. So I'm gonna pretend like we just left off our pickup where we left off, which docu our command dropping us off right here into the documents tab. Now our first inclination is like, oh, let's start adding documents. I need to get my listing agreement. I need to get my disclosures and then write my purchase and sale. Don't. Before we start adding documents in DocuSign, we need to go to the details tab. The details tab is where we are going to add all of the information about this transaction. It's where we're gonna make sure that our client's name and email address information is included correctly, the property address information is included, because this, all the information on the details tab is what is going to auto-populate into the GAR forms. I do wanna clarify, DocuSign does not have the same integration with FMLS that DotLoop did, so you just can't type in the MLS number and have all the information pre-populated. So you will have to type it in manually, but if you type it in on the details tab, you won't have to do it every single time. So to get started making edits to the details tab, click edit in the top right-hand corner. And we're gonna kind of do this in two parts. Um, on the left-hand side, probably the left-hand two, two thirds of the screen is gonna be all the information about the property. And then on the right third of the screen is gonna be information about clients, agents, buyers, sellers, and then we're gonna fill that out. So I'm gonna get started just at the top and we're gonna work our way down. So the name of the room, this is gonna be auto-created based on the name of our opportunity in command. Uh, yeah, I don't, you don't need to change it, um, but you can if you want to. And then just kind of you know fill in the information as you have it, local currency, 
US dollars. If you have the MLS number, you can just type that in here. I'll just put in some uh, bogus numbers for, for now. Now, some of this information, like origin of lead, you don't, it's not going to affect uh, anything. You can fill it in if you want, just to keep track of it. But then we'll type in the address. So we'll do one, two, three, four, Main Street, Northeast, at Atlanta County. I'll do Fulton, Georgia. Three zero three four two, property type. We'll do residential detached, year built. Uh, I'm just going to select two thousand just for ease, and no special circumstances. So listing date. So we can give this a list date. We'll have this let live for tomorrow. Expiration. We'll give ourselves two months for this listing. Original listing amount. We'll do four fifty one two three, four five zero one two three. Five zero one two three, four five zero one two three. Perfect. Now for offer details, we don't have any of that information yet because we're just about to get this uh, property listed. All right. So to scroll down, we don't have any bid information, no closing information, tax information. You can add in this information if you have it, but um, we don't have it for the time being. So I'm going to go back to the top. So now I did all the information about the actual property on the left-hand side, and now I'm gonna come over to the right-hand side of the screen and fill in all the information about my sellers. Now, most of the, I would say nine times out of 10, DocuSign will pull in our client contact information out of command. So you always wanna double check and make sure that it's correct and that it was pulled in. Um, sometimes it doesn't depending on um, how the system, how, how recently you created the contact, how quickly uh, after creating a contact you started your room. But just double check and you'll wanna fill in any information that's missing. Now for DocuSign, the only real information that you need to have for your clients is their name, their legal name as they're gonna sign on documents and their email address. So DocuSign has an email to send documents for e-signature. You don't need to put in their phone number, business phone or their address, it doesn't matter. You can leave that blank. So I can see here, Tony Stark is gonna be seller number one. Now we have seller number one, and if I scroll down just a bit, you'll see we have seller number two, Pepper Potts. So these are my um, fake sellers for this, this morning's training. Here's Pepper, here's Pepper's email address, which is my personal email. Um, now, the reason I wanna point out that there's seller one and seller two is because it's important which client you put in the seller one and seller two positions. Seller one is going to be the client that is mapped to fill in all of the information on the seller's property disclosure, community association disclosure, and lead-based paint. You'll want to talk with your clients, and if you have more than one client, more than one seller, to see who wants to be the one responsible for filling that information in. And then you'll make sure that that person is in the seller one position. So I see we have seller one information, name, email address, good to go. Seller two, Pepper Potts, email address. Then we'll scroll down, listing agent. Now it's gonna pull in most of my information. Um, this is gonna come directly from command as well as my DocuSign profile. So my business phone, email address, company. Now it's going to default to Keller Williams Realty First Atlanta or Keller Williams Realty Atlanta Perimeter. I would recommend that you take out Realty uh, out of your company name just so that it fits better um, in the space where it has your company name. There are some places where the actual amount of space is limited and we're unable to change the font size. So I would just remove, remove Realty out of the company name. Fill in your address information, Atlanta, country, United States, state, Georgia, zip code 30342. Then I'll continue to scroll down, listing agent two. So if you had a co-op agent or a co-listing agent, you would put his or her information here. And then scrolling down, we have buyer one. Now, I wanna point out, since today's example is a listing, I'm not representing the buyers at all, I want, you may feel inclined that once you go under contract that you want to include the buyer's names and the buyer's agent. 
my recommendation, never include the co-op agent or co-op um, clients in your details tab or on any of your documents in DocuSign. And I'll explain in more detail why uh, later on once we go to create an envelope and send things for signature, but only include your clients and yourself or your um, co-listing agent as uh, clients in the details tab. Now, if you are the buyer's agent, I recommend the same thing. On the flip side, do not include any of the seller's information or listing agent's information and just put your buyer uh, clients and your name as the buyer's agent. So I'm gonna scroll down. So we have buyer one, buyer two, buyer agent one, and buyer agent two. Now, if I had set up my opportunity and command as a buyer's transaction, it would pull in this information into the buyer's fields. Couple questions. Uh, any idea why the office street address carries over but not the city state zip? I do not know why not all that information pulls over. It's been um, a point of frustration for a lot of agents, um, but you can update your profile in DocuSign with all that information uh, to see if that will help. I've, I worked with Hutch at the regional level, to see if we can get some of those fields uh, remapped to include that, uh, as well as a lot of the other information that we're gonna look at uh, in the listing agreement and purchase and sale agreement. Uh, will you be showing us how to get the GAR forms for the listing? Absolutely. So I'm just, right now we're just going through the details tab to fill in all of the information. So that way when we go to create and edit the GAR forms, all, the, all those fields are mapped and filled in correctly. All right, so now that we've gone through, we've double checked the, and edited the property information, the seller's information, my information as the listing agent. I'm gonna click save in the bottom right hand corner. Room has been updated, perfect. So now that the details are updated, now we can go back to the Documents tab. And the Documents tab is where we're going to add GAR forms. We will not be adding our affiliated marketing or wire fraud prevention or any other office templates in the Documents tab. All of those will be added in a few moments in the envelope. This, the Documents portion of DocuSign is really just to update form templates. And I will show you what I mean by that. Uh, uh, Nick, Nick? Yes. That is not the way we're set up. Oh, I so mean, you guys, you guys we, have your forms here? Yep. Okay. I've, yeah. So I, I don't want to <laughs> okay, well, confuse everybody. So my apologies. So for, for First Atlanta, we have them in the envelopes. But for Atlanta Perimeter, you guys have access they to are them here. And all, I will mm -hmm. show you where we'll find them in just a moment. OK. Um, so question, can you uh, say again why you recommend we don't put the co-op information in? Well, I didn't really give a full explanation, um, but the reason is I don't recommend putting in co-op agents is because the way DocuSign works is that anytime you add someone as um, a signer to a document, that everybody has to sign before that document is completed and you have a signed finished copy. So let's say for instance, you're putting together a purchase and sale agreement uh, for your buyers and you want, to add, you want to be proactive and you want to include the listing agent as a signer on that document. Well, more, more than likely, if it's your first offer, that listing agreement, or sorry, that listing agent isn't going to sign that offer. And then what's going to happen is you're going to have a partially signed document that the system will never register as being completed and you will never be able to download the document with just your signatures and your buyer's signatures on it. It'll always show as incomplete. So I would recommend that you just send to your clients and have yourself sign, and then you can send a PDF of that document completed to the co-op agent. And I'll show you uh, in just a minute how that works in DocuSign. So um, now that we're gonna add our forms, we can come up to the add button in the top right-hand corner. We're gonna select DocuSign forms. Now I do know in uh, for Atlanta Perimeter, you guys have some groups set up. So right now I wanna show you how to find the documents uh, from the library, from the, so all the GAR forms. So you would select the DocuSign forms library, and then from the drop-down menu, select Georgia Association of Realtors. And this is gonna show all, I think it's 181 GAR forms. And you'll start looking for the forms that you want. So this is the listing, so we'll do exclusive, seller, 
listing agreement. So I'm gonna check that and I can see down here in the bottom left-hand corner, it says one form selected. And I'm gonna add, um, let's do sellers property disclosure. Select that, now it lets me know the two forms are selected. Uh, we're gonna do community association disclosure. Perfect. And then I wanna show the purchase and sale agreement because I know that we're working on a listing here, but you know, I think everyone will hopefully be using a purchase and sale agreement in their career. Uh, so it's a pretty important document. So I just wanna walk through quickly um, what, how, what that process is like, what the form looks like. So I'm gonna add um, F201. So you can see you can search either by name or the form number. I would recommend that if you are gonna be adding documents from the GAR library that you learn the actual form numbers for the forms that you use regularly because a lot of forms have very similar names and I've caught myself adding um, condo or landlot uh, forms by accident when I was in a rush uh, and not the actual residential forms. Now, for Atlanta Perimeter, Stacy has gone through uh, and set up a bunch of groups for you, which is amazing. So if you want to go ahead uh, and you're like, you know what, I'm doing a listing. I just want to grab all of those listing forms. Um, you can select uh, from the drop down, first drop down, DocuSign Forms Group. And then here, you will have a handful, I think you have eight different groups um, of all of the most common forms that are going to be uh, needed for a buyer's uh, agreement, a listing, um, some commercial, all those there. So you can just select that group and it will show you all the documents. Um, that you'll likely be using there and then you can just select all of them and click add. Okay gang, um, yes just what Nick said is true. I've got all of the um, consumer brochures in one group, um, buyer listing, uh, lease, referrals, all those groups and um, I did put the affiliated marketing and wire fraud in both the uh, buyer and listing groups. It's also in the, I have a QAP forms group. Pay at close is in QAP forms. Uh, there might be something else, but, um, oh, a, a W9 for referrals. Anyway. Yeah. And we have commercial forms too. Yeah, so you guys have everything that you would need in those groups. I'm gonna say probably 90% of the time you're gonna end up using groups because it's gonna be a lot easier than going through um, yep. and searching. But I just wanted to show you so that way you knew how you could find any of the other GAR forms, especially if you um, in the, you know, your amendments, um, like amendment to, um, to address concerns or amendment to agreement or reduce sales price, any of those forms that may not be um, in those groups. All right, so now we have um, they're there. Oh, they are? Okay, perfect. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess, so now I have to re-add all these forms because I unselected them. So let me just add them super quickly. Sellers, property, disclosure, community, association disclosure, and then uh, exclusive sellers, let seller was in agreement. Perfect. So I have all forms, all four forms selected, and I'm gonna click add. The page is going to refresh, and all of those documents are going to default into the room docs folder. So right now, the document, the documents tab has one folder. Now, you can set up and organize your DocuSign room any which way that you want. Lynn is not gonna look in your DocuSign folder. That's what command is for. Because I know in dot loop, we had to organize things in a specific way, in a specific order. So in that way, uh, as compliance was reviewing, they knew exactly what they were looking at. They're not gonna look at your DocuSign room. So it can be as messy as you want, but it can also be as neat as you want. Um, so if you wanted to, you see here, I have you know some of my listing agreements, but then I also have my purchase and sale. So I may wanna create some separate folders. Um, to do that, I would select actions, add folder, and I'm gonna make a listing uh, agreement folder. So I'll select create. Now there's two ways that you can put uh, move documents into this folder. You can select 
the documents by rolling your mouse over the icon and then selecting the circle in the top left hand corner. And then when you do that, this menu toolbar appears right here. And one of the options is move, so I can select move, select a destination folder in current room, and then select the listing agreement folder and then select move. And it will automatically move those documents for me. But a simpler way that you can do this is just click on the document and drag it up to the folder, and it's that easy. So now I have my document separated um, out by my listing agreement, and then I just have my purchase and sale in the room box folder. Now I do want to clarify that every time you upload a document, get assigned a document assigned and completed, it's going to default into the room docs folder. So you will have to move all those documents once they come in. I would also um, recommend that at this point, kind of start to think about how you want to organize your documents, um, you know, from a listing agreement to contract negotiated folder to maybe a binding contract folder, just because you are going to start to have duplicates um, and numerous copies of some of the documents and you want to make sure you can keep them all organized and that will also help uh, simplify the upload process into command. So now that we have our documents, we've organized them, let's start filling them out. So we're gonna start with the exclusive seller listing agreement. So I'm just gonna click on it and it's gonna open up the document right here. Sometimes DocuSign's a little slow, be patient. And then you can see here, um, we have the property app information pre-populated, which is why it's so important to uh, update that information in the details tab. I do want to point out here that any of those fields that are pre-populated or that we didn't populate, um, if you make any edits, changes, delete any information from this field here that's mapped to the details tab, it will update that information on the details tab and subsequently update the information on every other document that we've added. So it'd be mindful, don't just go through willy-nilly making changes to these pre-populated uh, fields because it will change the fields on all of them. All right, so we have our uh, information here. Um, a question, but not one of the fields that have already been signed. Correct. Once a document's been signed, it becomes a PDF and it cannot, it will not be changed. So you'll be good to go there. So pre-populated here, then legal description, um, you can attach as exhibit. I personally just love to use deed, book, and page because it's pretty simple, so I'll just put in that information. Listing period, so just add in um, the information now. Ignore Nick, ignore what Nick just said. <laughs> About deed, book, fine. You can yes. use, use your exhibit, you can use your exhibit. Um, it's, it's Our the, closing the attorney possible. insists we do number one. All right, so yeah, do number one. Um, and just reach out to your closing attorney to get uh, that exhibit. So for a listing period, you do have to manually type in the address. So we'll do 725 2020 because we're going to kick off this listing tomorrow and then it's going to end on 925 2020. It doesn't have a calendar uh, field like dot loop. So you do have to manually add them in, which is a little bit of a pain, but it's fine. You can see here uh, the list price is pre-populated. Now it doesn't have commas in it. For whatever reason, um, sometimes DocuSign lets you put commas in, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, we reached out to the regional level to see if they can get that fixed, um, just because it makes it a lot simpler to see. Uh, quickly look at the number, you know, okay, this is $450,000 versus 45 or 4.5 million. All right, so just go through the document, you're gonna check the boxes, so the seller has the right um, to negotiate, marketing here, so you just type in, your information. Uh, one thing I do want to point out um, is that the training that we're going through this morning, um, as you know, Stacy pointed out for number one, this is all about just how to fill in the information on these forms. It's not an actual class on what information to fill in. So please do not take any of the information or recommendations of what I actually put in here because I'm going to use abbreviations, probably some incorrect information. I just want to show you how you actually go through the process of typing in and selecting fields. Please default to Stacy and Cynthia and Lynn uh, and your closing attorneys for all the actual correct information to put in all of your guard forms. All right, uh, so scrolling through, so we'll do commission, 
uh, we'll do our 6% here, buyer 3%, and again, that's all negotiable. Protected period, I put in 90 days. I'm an independent contractor, and dual eight, we do not offer dual agency or sub agency. Perfect. Scroll down, special circumstances. Thankfully, I don't have any of those for this transaction, so let's keep scrolling down. Look for any empty fields that we need to fill in. Thankfully, it's just a lot of text here. And then here, the brochures, you go through and select any of the brochures that you want to send. Let's protect, you know. And then if you have your legal description exhibit, you can, you know, put that here. And then special steps, you can just type in um, anything that you want to include. You can type in more, more. Perfect. So it's that simple. You can just type it in there. Um, Reiterate what you said about once saved as PDF, it cannot be altered. So, and I'll show you this um, once we go through the process of uh, signing the documents, but the way that DocuSign works is that this form that I'm filling in right here is basically just a template. It will always be a template that I can update numerous times and then send for signature. And then once that document is signed, it's gonna have two versions of it. It's gonna have one that's gonna remain this templated version that I can edit and then it's gonna have a signed PDF copy. That PDF copy cannot be altered um, or changed. Uh, Cause you know how in dot loop, if let's say you filled in the purchase and sale agreement, you sent it for signature, it was all signed. And then you went into that dot loop file and you started to make changes to it. It would say, oh, it's gonna delete the signatures. That's not how DocuSign works. And it'll make more sense once I'm able to show you with some actual documents in the room. So we'll walk through that in, uh, in detail uh, in just a moment. So you see here, we type in our special stipulations, good to go. If you need to add additional stipulations, be sure to check that box and add that GAR form. Scrolling down, you'll see here, our client's names are pre-populated. And so is our email address because both, both of those pieces of information came from the details tab. But you'll notice there's no signature fields here because those signature fields are not added to the document until we create an envelope to send those for signature. So it's gonna be a major difference versus uh, what we're used to in dot loop. But I promise they're gonna be there. I also wanna point out that because we added our client's contact information in the details tab, it's going to auto-populate every time there's a field for our client's contact information. And I am just wanna preface that, that do not delete that information from any of these fields. And I'll walk you through that more uh, specifically in the purchase and sale agreement. So scrolling down, you can see here, it pre-populates most of um, my information. Now this is what I had mentioned earlier where, um, where the, the regional level is working with DocuSign to see if they can get these fields to be filled in because they're not, they don't come filled in. Uh, and it's very frustrating and no one wants to have to go through every single time and fill this information in. Now, right now there is a workaround that you can uh, make a template and I'm gonna do a deep dive on templates, I think in two weeks or um, on one of the Wednesday deep dive classes. But that's really not an ideal situation. So hopefully we'll be able to get uh, the system to update to have all these fields automatically mapped. So you just fill in all the information. Can't do anything here for receipt or copy, and I'm gonna click save and close. And it's that simple. It's very, the process of inputting information is very similar to DocuSign. So, or sorry, dot loop. So next, I'm going to fill in the seller's property disclosure, or open that up. show you what that is like. Perfect, you can see here, um, the property information is automatically added from our details tab. I can add the exhibit letter if I wanted to, but we don't want to because it's not a part of the contract just yet and there's no offer date. Then I'm gonna scroll down and then you'll see here are all these fields for the disclosure, but there aren't any fields for me to fill in. There's nothing to add or sign. That is on purpose. All of these fields to fill in this information are 
are all mapped to seller one. So when I'm in the documents tab, I can't make any edits, updates, additions, changes to any of these fields because as us as realtors, this, we cannot fill these out. We do not want to be on the hook for this. So we have to send it to seller one to fill in. So I can't change it. So I just want to show you how all these fields are blank. Uh, and then I'll scroll down to the bottom and it will pre-populate our client's names. And that's it. So save and close. Uh, so, so it must be complete before going to envelopes. No changes once an envelope. Um, Cecilia, kind of, yes. Um, I mean, the document needs to be filled in as completely as possible uh, before creating an envelope that's sent for signature. But you can't, I'll, I'll show you kind of a little bit of a workaround if you do have to make some last second additions to the document in the envelope. All right, so we did seller's property disclosure. I'm gonna open up the community association disclosure. Same thing, just wanna reiterate that all of these fields are gonna be mapped to seller one and we can't make any updates. So all these fields are blank. It looks like it's, it's the, the document hasn't been prepared, but it is. And I'll show you in the envelope um, how you can tell that all these fields are mapped to seller one. And then, so it's just seller initials, so it's not gonna show any initials here. Those are added in in the uh, envelope. So save and close. Now for our Atlanta perimeter friends, you would also have your wire fraud and affiliated marketing disclosures here as a part of your room, uh, your docu documents tab. Since I'm not an agent with your office, I don't have those because that's not how ours is set up. Now I wanna go through the purchase and sale agreement. I know we're on a listing, but I just wanna show you uh, what the process is like. It's gonna be the same thing as going through the listing agreement, uh, but I just wanna make sure that you're comfortable with this form since it's gonna be probably one of the most important forms that you will be using in your career. All right, so purchase and sale agreement, offer date. So let's, you know, we'll write an offer date for today. And then it fills in the property, property information. Now, for our Atlanta perimeter friends, we are going to attach as an exhibit um, the legal description. Good to go. Uh, purchase price. So you just that's you know we'll we'll do uh, four forty. Oh. All right, and then closing cost we'll do five thousand. Now, one thing I really like about DocuSign is that you can just click tab and go from one field to the next. It's that easy. And another great thing about DocuSign that I love is that you cannot accidentally delete these text fields. I can't tell you how many times I was in DocuSign or in dot loop working on special stipulations and I was like, oh, I spelled something incorrectly and I was hitting delete and then I accidentally hit held down shift and delete and it deleted the whole text box and I had to re-add everything. It was such a pain in my butt. You don't have to worry about that in DocuSign. These text fields aren't going anywhere. So closing date, we'll do 8-24-2020. Uh, closing at the time of closing. So very similar, you just kind of go through uh, the boxes and input your information. So I'm gonna do um, Campbell and Brandon as my closing attorney, earnest money. Let's do, we'll do 4,400 within three days of binding. I mean, you can see just how simple it is to go through here and just type in these fields. It's that easy, it was not built prior to 1978. I'll be selecting as client. Now, um, so I am in this transaction representing the seller because um, I guess listing agents can actually submit offers. Um, but for, for the selling broker today, let's, I'm just gonna put in Harry Norman. Working as client, material relationship, NA. Time limit of offer, we'll make this uh, 12 p.m. on uh, 7 25 2020. So we'll give her 24 hours to review this. And it's that simple just to go through um, and fill in the information. Again, make sure you fill in all the correct information on what um, your protocol is based on what Lynn and Cynthia and Stacy say. So scrolling down. All right, then we can come over here for our exhibit. So we'll do seller's property disclosure. 
I would add this as A, community association disclosure, B, and then you can type in any special stipulations, um, special stip one, special stip two, special stip three. Now I do want to point out that the area for writing special stipulations on this on the purchase and sale agreement isn't very big. I don't know why they made it this small, because um, I know a lot of agents have three or four stipulations that they use on every single contract, and this may not be enough space um, for you to fill, add those in. There's two different options of what you can do, is you can use the additional stipulations page and, and paste those uh, stipulations there, or you can fill in as many of the stipulations as you can on the purchase and sale agreement in the documents tab. And then when we're in the envelope, I can show you how you can add text box uh, to add some more text where we're actually able to control uh, the formatting of it so we can fit a little bit more in the space. So continue to scroll down. You'll see here, buyer or my seller's name, email address, seller two, name and email address. Now, I personally do not like to share my client's information with any co-op agent. I'm sure that nine times out of 10, that co-op agent is gonna be very respectful of the client relationship that I have with my uh, clients. However, there's always gonna be some rogue agent um, that gets frustrated or wants to try to you know, cut you out or do something shady. I don't want that to ever happen and I don't want my clients to ever be in that situation. But as I mentioned earlier, do not delete your client's email address off the purchase and sale agreement because if you do, it will delete it out of the details tab and thus there will not be any email address in the envelope to send these documents out uh, for signature to. So I'm gonna show you in the envelope how we can black out that email address so that way we still have all of our pre-tagged roles and everything is associated correctly, but I can still protect my client's privacy. So please do not delete your client's email address off the purchase and sale agreement or any other agreement that goes to a co-op agent. So scrolling down here, uh, I'll have to fill in um, my information again. So my license number, tax number, membership, Atlanta, fax number, MLS code, and then license number. Now, if you want to be a very nice agent and you're trying to do everything you can. We are very nice agents. <laughs> we fill this in completely. Yeah. So you can fill in all of your co-op agents information here without including them for signature. So I do want to clarify that because I told you earlier, don't put their information in the details tab. You can come through here if you want to write, I can write, you know, Patty agent here, license number one, two, three, four, five, six. Phone number, one, two, three, you know, you get the point. You can fill in all their information. So it's like, you've done everything. You're, you're being the best co-op agent possible. You're doing everything to get your client's offer to be the one um, that's accepted. You can put it here. Just don't include any email information and you'll be good to go. All right. So now, when you say don't include email information, don't type licensee's email address. Yeah, in this field here, do not put patty at harrynorman.com as an email address. Just leave it blank. Okay. All right. So everything looks good to go here. I'm going to click save and close. All right. So now we have all of our documents, they are good to go. Now we have to create an envelope to send them for signature. And the way that envelopes were explained to me from uh, Michael New in our MCA office here is that think of envelopes in DocuSign like a manila envelope that you would use to hold documents. So you've gone through, let's say you wrote out all these documents by hand, you filled in the purchase and sale agreement, you've organized them, and then you wanna put that in, in that manila envelope and put them on the corner of your desk until you go see your client and then you hand that manila envelope and all those documents to your clients and say, please sign. It's that same 
uh, option, the same setup here where you're going to create an envelope to send those documents. There's two ways that you can create an envelope, and I'll show you how to do both. The first is you can roll your mouse over the icon of the documents and select it. And when you do that, you'll notice this toolbar appears at the top of the screen. And you can roll over the different icons to where you see DocuSign, and you can click on DocuSign, and that's gonna create an envelope for you with all of these selected documents. That's way number one. Probably, probably gonna be the simpler of the two ways. But the other way is to come up here to the Envelopes tab, click on Envelopes, and then the top right-hand corner, select New, and we're gonna make an envelope. So this is the screen that we would uh, be dropped off to if we had selected DocuSign in the uh, Documents tab. So envelope name, we're just gonna start at the top here and work our way down to create this envelope. So envelope name, um, so we'll do one, two, three, four, Main Street, uh, exclusive listing agreement and purchase and sale. The envelope name is for your organization purposes only. Your clients aren't gonna see it. Now I do recommend don't put any bad names or anything in here that you wouldn't want a client to see, but this is just gonna be for you so that way you can, you're gonna send numerous envelopes. You may send 10, 20, 30 envelopes in a transaction depending on all the documents that you need signed. So label, name them appropriately so you can look back and say, okay, actually you signed the exclusive listing agreement on 7-24-2020. And I, it's easy for me to tell that right here from my envelopes. All right, so now we need to add documents to the envelope. So we wanna add all the documents from our uh, documents tab. So I'm gonna click on the room docs button here. And then I'm gonna select all the documents that I have that I wanna send. Now, as you start to get more documents in your room, as you go through the transaction and you start negotiating, going back and forth, you, they will all show up here. Just be mindful um, as you add documents in the future that you're adding the correct ones. So I'm gonna select, click add selected, and it's gonna load those forms into the document, into the envelope. Now for myself at First Atlanta, uh, for me to have access to uh, the affiliated marketing and wire fraud prevention, those are templates. Uh, and in the event that you at Atlanta Perimeter ever have a template document, I'm gonna show you how to, how to grab that document. So you would select use a template and then shared with me. And this is gonna be all of the documents that um, the MCA office has put together for you. So it's gonna, give it a second, it's gonna load. All right. So for me, I'm gonna scroll down. I see I have a buyer version of affiliated marketing and a buyer version of the wire fraud prevention. And I think um, Stacey said, said the same thing for you guys both have a seller and a buyer version of those two documents. And any other templates that you may have for your office would be here. And I'm gonna click add selected. And it's gonna add those documents to the envelope. All right, now DocuSign sets everything up in, usually in alphabetical order. So, or alphabetical order by folder from the documents tab. But we want to make sure that our clients are signing these documents in a very specific order. Because right now they'd be signing the community association before the listing agreement and that doesn't make sense. So we want to reorder those documents in the correct order for signature. So. I want my exclusive seller listing agreement to be the first one. So to move it, I just click on the document and then hold my mouse down and drag it to the position that I want. Then I want my seller's property disclosure. So I'm gonna click this and just drag it over. And then my community association disclosure. Then I want my wire fraud prevention notice and then my affiliated marketing. Perfect. So now I can see I have my listing agreement, SPD, CAD, wire fraud, affiliated marketing, and then my purchase and sale. So that's the correct order that I want those documents in. You have to put the documents in your desired order at this stage of the envelope. Once we go to the next screen and start double checking signatures, you aren't able to edit the order of them. You have to do it here. So just take your time and put them in the correct order.
All right, so now that we have all of our documents, let's start adding recipients to the envelope. And recipients are gonna be signers, um, is the best way to put it. Um, so to do that, I'm gonna click on the Add Recipient button, and I'm gonna click Pre-Tagged Roles. It is imperative that you select Pre-Tagged Roles anytime that Pre-Tagged Roles is an option, because all of all 181 GAR forms and the affiliated marketing and wire fraud documents, your pay at close, all of those documents have fields that are mapped to specific roles. So in the details tab, we went through when we filled in seller one, seller two, and listing agent. So all that information was pre-populated in the document. And now when we're in the envelope and we're gonna be setting up the signatures, if I select pre-tagged roles, all those signature fields are gonna be already created for me. So I don't have to do that. If you select room participants, you will have to go through and manually add signature fields throughout all these documents. And you're gonna, sit, you're gonna spend a lot of time doing that. So please select pre-tagged roles. So I click on pre-tagged roles, and this window is gonna pop up with all of the um, roles on all these documents. So here in the middle, it's gonna show a list of all the documents that are associated with each one of the potential signers. You can see if you roll your mouse over, it'll show a full list, so it doesn't look like I'm just sending the uh, community association disclosure. So for seller one, I'm gonna, from the drop down menu, I'm gonna select Tony Stark. All right. And then for seller two, I'm gonna select Pepper Potts. And then for the listing agent, I'm going to select myself. Now you may be in here twice. You can see here, I'm in here, right there, as well as here, because you will be assigned as, <clears throat> as the agent owner of the room, as well as having added yourself as the listing agent in the details tab. It doesn't matter which uh, version of yourself you select, it'll still go to the same place. So I'll select myself as listing agent, and then I'll click add selected. All right, let's give it a second to load. Perfect. All right, so there's a handful of information I want to talk through for uh, each one of the recipients. So on the left-hand side, we see these, there are three boxes and they each have number one in them. In DocuSign, you can set up the order in which people sign. That's gonna be really useful, especially uh, when, when the seller one needs to fill in the seller's property disclosure and the community association disclosure. So what I can do is I can leave Tony Stark as seller one to be the first recipient. I can then change Pepper Potts to be recipient number two. So she won't even get an email notification from DocuSign that she needs to sign anything until after Tony Stark has finished everything. Then she'll get a notification and I can set myself up to be the third signer. I know, it, um, oh, that was weird. So let me change this and then Pepper change myself to number three. Perfect, now it's reordered. Now I know some agents like to be the first ones to sign, last ones to sign. There's benefits to both. Um, one of the benefit that I like for being the last one to sign is that I can make um, documents binding when I sign it. So it just kind of saves me one step uh, later on to have to go back and update that at the timestamp. So we have our signing order here. Now in each one of the fields, we have this drop down where it says needs to sign there's a handful of different roles and responsibilities that they can have. So you can have needs to sign, needs to view, receives a copy, specify recipient. Most times you are going to click on needs to sign because they're, they're receiving this document so they can actually review it and sign it. Sometimes they may just need to view it um, or they can receive a copy. Receiving a copy can become in handy that um, let's say you want to get this offer over to your over to the co-op agent as soon as possible. You could set up your co-op agent to receive a just receive a copy, um, so that once everything's signed, they can receive a copy. Or you can add your lender on here, so if they, if they want to receive a copy once everything is signed, you can do that as well. That is kind of DocuSign 2.0, uh, but I just want to kind of show an example of um, when that might come in handy. The next is more. And there's two options here. One is add an access, access authentication and add a private message. 
So you may have a client that doesn't, is not really comfortable with e-signature, is worried that someone could hack into their email and start signing all these purchase and sale agreements for all these properties, and then somehow your client is stuck buying three different houses. We don't want that to happen. So what we can do is we can add on an extra layer of security for this signer. And we can give them an access code. And you can just type in your access code here. So I can just type in one, two, three, four, five, six. And I would have to give Tony Stark, and I would give him a call and say, hey, Tony, for you to access these documents, to sign them, you need to type in one, two, three, four, five, six when you, when you open up the DocuSign window. That will give you access to it. You can add it for as many contacts as you want, or you can just click discard and get rid of it. The next is add a private message. So Tony Stark is seller one and is mapped to fill in all of the community association disclosure and seller's property disclosure. So I'm gonna add a, a private message that says, hi Tony, please be sure to fill in all of the fields in the SPD and CAD before clicking finish. Thank you. Now, I would recommend outside of this private message that you talk your, with your clients and let them know kind of the, what the process is gonna be like. And we'll walk through that in just a minute. But it's always nice to add, have this quick message here that only Tony will, will receive as a reminder. All right, all of our recipients are good to go. So I can scroll down and I can type my quick message to everybody. So I'll do please DocuSign. And then one, two, three, four, Main Street. Uh, exclusive listing agreement and purchase and sale. That way your clients know that this DocuSign email is specifically for the property that you guys are discussing and they know it's gonna be for the listing agreement and purchase and sale. You can type a little message, hi, Tony and Pepper, please review and sign at your earliest convenience. Thank you, Nick. You know, whatever uh, message you like to use for your clients, so once we've gone through, we've added all of our documents up here. We've set a name for our envelope. We've added our recipients in the correct order that we want them to sign. We've added our quick note. We've added our message. Now we can click next and we can go to the envelope editor to double check and make sure that all the signature fields um, do, um, all the signature fields are assigned correctly. So Stacy does not use acronyms with clients. I understand I just use acronyms just for this training example, just to save time. So I don't have to spell out exclusive listing agreement every time. So I'm gonna click next. And this is gonna take us to the editor. All right, so there's a lot of information on this page and I want to walk through the layout of it before we actually start playing with any of the documents. So starting in the left-hand corner, let me plug in my computer. Um, starting in the left-hand corner, you can see here, it says Tony Stark with a little yellow dot next to it. And there's a drop-down menu. I can click on that and I can see it has all three of the signers, so Tony, Pepper, and myself, and we each have a color dot coordinated with it. That dot lets me know that all these standard fields over here, if I were to add any of them, would be automatically assigned to Tony. I can click on pepper, it changes to blue. So now I know all these blue colored uh, fields would be assigned to pepper and the same thing for myself in purple. And it changes. Now below that we have all these standard fields. So if there's a place that we need to add a signature field, an initial field, date signed, name, email, all these fields, this is how we uh, drag them into the correct position. When you're using the GAR forms and the pre-tagged roles, you really won't have to add um, many, if any, of the standard fields. It's really gonna be uh, when you start having to uh, have a signed PDF that you receive from a co-op agent uh, or anything like that, that you'll have to start manually adding signature fields. Then in the middle of the document, we have our preview of the actual documents. And then over on the right-hand side, we have thumbnails of all the documents. So you can see here, exclusive seller listing agreement. So I can just quickly scroll through the thumbnails. And then as I get to page eight, you can see there are these tabs with the colors on them. And that lets me know that there is a place on page eight of my listing agreement where someone is gonna be, someone has a required field. 
So I can just click straight on this and I can see that Tony, Pepper, and myself all have sign fields set up for us. And that's because we selected pre-tagged roles. So the system knew that because I had selected myself as a listing agent, Tony as seller one and Pepper as seller two, where to put and assign those signature fields. So what we'll wanna do before we send is go through and double check and make sure all the signature fields are correct. You can do that just by scrolling through the documents here. Well, actually, you know what? I got ahead of myself. I mentioned earlier one of the benefits that I like of being the last person to sign is that I can make this document binding. And the way to do that is I can add in um, a date signed field right here and have it assigned with, uh, associated with myself. So that way when I go into sign, it's gonna auto populate this date here. And I can also add a text box right here and just format that, format the box to fit and do the same thing here and another text box. And by it being purple, I know that it's assigned to me. And then if I come over here on the right hand side, whenever you're in um, a, standard, a standard field, this menu will pop up. It lets me know that it's uh, assigned to me and it's a required field. Having that check box, uh, check, check box of it being a required field will let the system know that when I'm going through and signing, and it's gonna go from required field to required field to stop on these two text boxes for me to fill them in with the appropriate date or time that I'll make this binding. And the benefit is, is that once everyone signs, DocuSign sends out an email with all of the documents and this can already be um, a bound document, so I don't have to go back in and redo it and then send it. The system does it for me automatically, and it just saves one step. Now, you can't use this every single time because not every single time that you use a purchase and sale or a listing agreement or any other document uh, will it actually be time for it to be binding. But in this case, for a buyer brokerage or a listing agreement, um, it could work there. Um, so the timestamp does have the time on it. I just prefer to fill it in. Um, that's a personal preference uh, to fill in the actual time here within those boxes. All right, so this is our exclusive listing agreement. Let's scroll through. Now we get to the seller's property disclosure. So when we were in the documents tab, I, it didn't look like there were any fields mapped. But as we scroll down, you'll start to see all of these fields have yellow boxes around them. And I click on it. And it lets me know that those are assigned to Tony Stark. So seller number one, all of these fields are assigned to seller number one. That being said, I wanna point out when I click on one of these fields, it is not required because the system doesn't know, um, you know if, so if the client is gonna have to select yes or no or put in information or not put in an explanation so it has all the fields readily available for them to select or fill in information, but it's not gonna be required. And the reason I point that out is because when the system, when they're going through and signing, it's gonna skip over all of these non-required fields and go straight to the required ones. So you will have to have that conversation with your clients, let them know, hey, when you um, receive your documents for signature, the system's just gonna jump you from one field, required field to the next. Before you click finish, please be sure to go up and fill in all the information for the seller's property disclosure and community association disclosure. All right, so um, you can see here, all these fields for the seller's property disclosure are all mapped to seller number one. Text, 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 lots of check boxes, scrolling down. And then here we have seller number one, pre-signed, our pre-tagged role in seller number two. We'll just keep scrolling. It's the same thing for the community association all of those fields are mapped to seller number one. And you'll definitely wanna give them a heads up because this may take them a few minutes to fill in. And then there's your signatures. And then I'd added um, the wire fraud document. And for whatever reason today did not have signatures on it. So let me just add these really fast. So let me do signature, name, and date, I'll do the same thing for Pepper. So 
So really to add these fields, you just click on it and then move your mouse over here and drop it down. You don't even have to drag it, it's that simple. I'm gonna ask a quick question because I think I'm yeah. confused on something. <clears throat> so you showed me where all those um, fields were you know, designated to Tony and they were yellow, but yet you, it won't auto require him to fill them out. You need to let him know to fill them out. So, so you're talking about for the, the community association disclosure? Yes. yes. Yes, so they're not set as required fields. So it's not, the system isn't gonna stop him to fill them out. I got you. So, and I'll show, so we're gonna go through signing it and I will sign these documents as if I'm Tony. So that way you can see what it's like for your clients. Um, it's, you could go through if you really wanted to, um, I can come here, sell as property disclosure and I could make, I could set this, what year is a dwelling, dwelling constructed? This is a, ha he has to fill this in. So I could make this required and the system will stop him here, which could be a benefit. So that way they're like, oh, okay, yeah, now I know I need to fill this in. You could do that. And I could do the same thing um, for the community association disclosure. I can come right here and I can pick, make this a required field. And that way it'll stop Tony uh, in the system and he'll have to fill this information out. So it is kind of a little bit of a workaround uh, if you want to make sure that it stops for him. All right, so then we had affiliated marketing. Let's see, okay, so I don't know why it's not adding their signatures here. I'll double check with my MCA office because this is odd. Date signed, Tony, Pepper, Another thing I want to point out is when you're working with these uh, fields, so let's say you accidentally add, you add the signature field for the wrong person. When this, when you're in, when you click on one of the signature fields or one of the required fields, you could change the recipient right here. So I could change that to Tony and back to Pepper. It's that simple. So that way you don't have to delete it. You don't have to go back up here. You can just change it over here on the right hand side. And the next is purchase and sale agreement. Just double check and make sure all the information looks good to go. Now you see here for the purchase price, it doesn't include the comma, but it just for the closing costs. I don't know. Whoever at DocuSign mapped those fields did it that way. Here's our initials for our clients. Scrolling down. Keep scrolling. I wanna to get to the special steps. So, so we have our three special steps here. But as I mentioned, they may not be, there may not be enough room on the actual GAR form, and you may want to add that text in here. So to do that, you could come here, select your cell, and then add a text field. So I can add a text field, and we can resize that so it takes up all the space. And I can start typing in, special step, more, more, more. Lots more, even more, more. All right, so you could fill this in, but let's say you have even more stipulations and you need a little bit more space. Well, you could select all the text and then in the menu over here, um, we can select formatting and we can make this seven point font. So now it's small font, so we can fit more in here. Now. This may be kind of annoying uh, for the co-op agent or for the closing attorney to have small font, but it is a workaround so that way you don't have to use the additional steps page. It is an option. And then the last thing I want you to do if you're gonna add your special steps here, I want you to uncheck required field and I want you to check read only because we have set this document up that we're gonna be the last signer. So if it's a required field for me to fill in, it's not gonna show when Tony and Pepper sign. So I wanna leave it as read only, and that way the system will know that this is, this text is gonna be on the document for everyone to review and sign. All right, so scrolling down, we'll double check. All right, here, we're on the purchase and sale agreement, so we're gonna share this with the co-op agent, and I promise that I would show you how to hide our client's information. So here, I want to hide um, Tony's information. So I'm going to come over to the left-hand side and where it has a little pencil icon, it's called markup tools. 
So select markup tools and then line. So I'm gonna select line. And I'm just gonna grab this line and drag it across his email address. When you, when you finish, the menu will pop up on the right hand side so we can make some edits so I can come to color. I'm gonna make this black. And then thickness, I'm just gonna make this a couple sizes thicker. Perfect, and now I can just click on it and kind of use um, my up and down mouse to cover it up. You can edit it so that way it's straight. And then one thing that I really like about DocuSign is that you can copy edit fields. So I can right mouse click, copy, and then right mouse click paste, and it makes a copy of it. And I can just drag that down to cover Pepper's email and I can just drag it to be a little bit longer. And that is how I recommend that you protect your client's privacy while still maintaining pre-tagged roles. It may not be the most beautiful um, thing to have a, a black box on your purchase and sale agreement, but I think it's worthwhile to protect your clients. So we'll scroll down, double check our signatures. Now, for whatever reason, my signature did not show up here um, as listing agent. So I'm gonna add my standard fields. I'm just gonna select signature. And then we'll do date signed right here. And we'll make that just a little bit bigger. So that's why I was always saying, just double check and make sure that the signature fields are there. Nine times out of 10, they will be. Um, but whoever um, at DocuSign pre-mapped all these documents was not an agent. So they didn't understand sometimes the difference between listing agent versus listing broker versus, you know, the different roles and titles. Um, so just double check and make sure you add any missing signature fields there. All right, so now we are done with all the documents, but before we send to our clients, I wanna show you there's a recipient preview. So you can click on this and we have the option to look to see what it's gonna, what our uh, DocuSign experience will be like on a uh, computer, on a tablet and on a phone. So you can see how small that is. Um, you can't even really read it. And then you can select um, the different clients and different signers. So I can see what is it gonna be like for Tony when he goes to sign. And this is just gonna be a preview. None of it is gonna be actual. It's not gonna affect anything. So you can see a quick start. It jumps to the signature field. Now I made, I made that one field required about the year that the house was um, dwelling construction. So I constructed so I can say 2000. And this will be a quick way to get him to be able to stop and sign, you know, fill in all this information. Type in text. And then once he's good, you can click next and then sign. And then same thing, I made this one field um, on the community association disclosure required, so it's gonna stop him there. And then he could come back up here and select mandatory association. It's $1,000 paid in two, in two installments. And then fill in the rest of the information. And click next. Initial, sign, sign, initial, sign. Perfect, so now he's finished. Um, but because it's just a preview, it doesn't actually do anything. So I'm gonna click on the X up here in the top right hand corner to get back into the envelope editor and I am going to click send. Now this is going to send out to Tony first and then to um, Pepper and then myself as the agent. So I'm gonna open up my email so I can show you really quickly. So I'm gonna open up, all right, so here we go. Are we in my personal, all right, this looks like it is my personal email. Just give this a second. Oh, sorry, wrong one. I need to, this is gonna be Pepper's email. I need to open up my KWFA tech. Perfect, so here we go. We have our uh, Please DocuSign 1234 Main Street Exclusive Listing Agreement and Purchase and Sale. So I click on that, scroll down. Here's the message to both Tony and Pepper, but here is that private message for Tony Please be sure to fill in all the fields in the SPD and CED before clicking finish. All right, so click review documents. I'm gonna open up a new browser window. I'll come over here, I'll click agree and use electronic records, continue. Then we're gonna click start, sign. It's gonna have me confirm 
which signature I want. So if they want to change their signature or do anything, they can change that here. They can draw it if they want or upload. It's fine just to use this one. Click adopt and sign. And then here's my seller's property disclosure. Now, because I made this one field required, I'm going to type in you know, 2000. And then I would just go through here and I would just, I'm just going to go through and um, check this information. Then you can type in info, info, yes, yes. And you can just go through here and fill in all this information. So by making that one field required, it does make it a little bit easier to stop him, uh, stop your seller one. And you can just type in all this information. HVAC eight years. You see, just go back and forth, you know, just check everything. It's that simple. Um, so once he's finished uh, filling in all the information for the SPD, click next. It'll take him to the signature field. And then we're gonna go to the community association disclosure. Uh, and we can select mandatory, 1,000, two installments, uh, oh, this is condominium. Did I select the wrong form? Oh, here we go. Let's do this one. 1,000 in two installments, and then HOA name, and then info, info, and then he can just tap through, fill in all this information, all these fields, no special assessments. So I'm just trying to like breeze through here really fast. So we have our swim, tennis, maintenance, like common area maintenance. You can check all that information. And then initial, sign, sign, initial, sign. And you see that his email is blacked out. Um, and then I also want to scroll up really quickly. And you can see here's those, here are the additional stipulations that I added in the text box. And because I made them read only, they show up on the document for everybody. So Tony has finished signing and he can click finish. Your clients must click finish for the system to know that they have signed everything. If they just sign everything and they're like, oh, I'm good to go. And they close it out without selecting finish. The system will not register that seller one has completed all the documents and allow seller two to go to sign. They don't need to save a copy of their documents because you're going to send them one. So they can just click no thanks. And they need to get this, you're all done message. That's how they will know that they are good to go um, with signing everything. So now that seller one is complete, I'm going to go into um, Pepper's email. We can see here, please DocuSign, 1234 Main Street. I open it up. Here's the message to both Tony and Pepper. And you notice there is no message to just Tony because that was a private message. So I'm gonna click on review documents. I'll start here and then continue. I'll click start, we'll sign there. We'll confirm signature. Now it just jumped past um, the seller's property disclosure, but I just wanna scroll up really quickly um, because I wanna show you that all of the additions and edits that Tony made to this document show up for Pepper. So seller two of your clients can go through and double check and make sure that everything that seller one put in was correct. There's all the little check mark boxes, some additional info here, some additional info, eight years old, perfect. So I want seller two can initial to confirm that everything's good to go. Now Pepper's finished, click finish. No, thank you. All done. So I can close here and close this. And then let me open up my work email. And because I am signer number three is now my opportunity to please DocuSign. I review documents. Click continue, start. Sign. Now remember I made, I'm gonna make this document binding, so I'm just gonna make this binding at 12 p.m. 
today. So I filled in those fields because it stopped me because I made sure that they were required. Click next, sign, and finish. I do not want to log in, so let's click no thank you. And I got the all done message. And that's how I know everything is good to go. So I can close out of here. Now what I want to show you is now that we're all done, I can come back into, um, this is Tony's email. If you just give the system a second, you can see now it has an email that says completed and it's all the documents for that envelope. So they can click here and view all the signed documents. This is a this is a easy, simple way for you to be uh, compliant to make sure that you send signed copies of all of the documents to our clients. So here's all the, the documents, everything signed. Scroll down. Sign, sign, sign. Sellers property disclosure, all that information. They can download, they can print. So I just wanna let you know that that is gonna be, once everyone is signed, they're gonna receive those copies. So I'm gonna close out of these windows. And then I'm gonna come back into uh, DocuSign, into my room, or into the envelope. I'm just gonna refresh, because now the envelope is gonna show as completed. So I'll click on completed, and you'll be able to see here, it shows the exact date and time that everyone signed the documents. If you wanted to, you could view them here. You can copy, view envelope history. You don't need to do any of that, really. I'm gonna click the X in the top right-hand corner because now I'm gonna to go to the Documents tab. And once documents are signed, they're going to auto-populate into the Room Docs folder. I wanna point out here the easiest way that you're gonna be able to tell the difference between a GAR form and a signed document is that the signed documents are gonna have a green checkbox in the bottom right-hand corner of the document icon. That lets you know that it is signed. It is a PDF. When I look up here um, for the GAR, the listing agreement and seller's property disclosure, these are forms. So I could still come back in here and I could edit this form. Let's say we're going back and forth and or for the seller's property disclosure, they're like, oh no, we forgot to fill in this one, this one section. You could just resend this document and they would can fill it all in again. And then it wouldn't edit. Um, this signed document. So you can see here, you can open it up. It's signed, it's a PDF. So now- so Nick, Just to confirm that I understand what you're saying about that, let the lead-based paint disclosure, that's always a form that it, it, they get confused and things and we end up having to change it. Yeah. Um, so, you're, they have to fill the entire thing over again. There's no way for that, that's not correct. Oh. So, so let's say let's say you're they're like, oh, we forgot this one portion of the seller's property disclosure. You could just send them the form again, and they could fill it all in. But since we are Keller Williams agents and we are all about customer service, we're gonna make it as easy as possible for them. So what you can do is you can come over here. And I could select my seller's property disclosure signed document. I can come up, I can select DocuSign. It's going to create an envelope for me. There's my uh, document. And I'm just going to breeze through this for time. Um, I'm not going to update the name. Now here, since this is a PDF, there's no pre-tag role. So I'll select room participants. And then I'm going to select Tony Stark. You can see seller one. Click add recipient. I'm not going to fill in a message. And I'll click on next. And then here's all the filled in information that he filled in correctly before. But let's say uh, he forgot to fill in this text right here. I could come right here and I could add a text box. Okay. And then I could add another text box. And I I'll just make this um, I'll make the second one not required, but the first one required. So he at least has to put in some type of, of um, uh, feel or some type of information. And I click send. So I'm just gonna open up my email just to show you really quickly um, 
No, I, well, I understand what I, yeah, I got what you, I understand that. So you don't have to do it for me, but. Um, well, well, I do want to show you, um, since we went through uh, and added it, and now Tony has this, please DocuSign, because it's going to, I want to show you, there's going to be duplicates in the room. So I'll select yes, start adding additional information, info, 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 finish. No, thanks. You're all done. Perfect. So I can come back into my envelopes. I'll, I'll refresh it. All done. I'll come back into my documents tab. Now we're going to scroll down and we're going to see our seller's property disclosure exhibit. Here's our signed one. And then here's disclosure signed dash signed. So that lets me know that this is the correct one with the addition of the that explanation. So let me just scroll down really fast and I can show you where I added that text, adding additional information, info, info. So what I'm going to want to do, because I don't want two copies of this, I will select this version, the original one that was not fully filled in, and I'm going to archive it. Just because you'll have, it'll get confusing when you see sign, dash sign, dash sign, if you, when you go through and you make uh, updates like that. Got it. So we're, we're getting really short on time, so I do want to kind of breeze through a couple things, um, how to download documents, combine documents, and split documents. And then, then obviously upload for compliance. So now that we have our signed documents, we want to send a single PDF of all these together to our client. And we can make that PDF right here in DocuSign. So I'm going to select all of the documents that are um, associated with the listing agreement. So there's property disclosure and then wire fraud. Up here, uh, when the toolbar appears, there's an option called combine. If I select combine, this new window will pop up and I can say, uh, I can give this a new name, one, two, three, four, Main Street, exclusive listing agreement, signed docs. And now we want to put this in the correct order. So if you want to, just click on the document and drag it up to the specific order you'd like it in. Sellers so property disclosure, community association, and affiliated, and then wire fraud. And then click save. The page will refresh. And in the room docs folder, we now have a new PDF with all of those documents combined. So you can see there is one of 20. Now, let's say you get a document from um, a, uh, a co-op agent that you need to upload. You can click add, and then you can add computer. And I'm just going to, um, actually, you know what? I'll just add this disclosure from closing I just had. So I can just click open. Perfect. It's been added. And let me come, let me find, let me just click refresh to make sure it was added correctly. Um, here we go. So that was that easy to add that document. So there's my signed Alta from my closing yesterday. If I wanted to, I could, um, if I wanted to, let's say I wanted to split this up, this is four pages. I can split this up into four different documents. I could, because let's say they, let's say the co-op agent makes, um, they, they accept our agreement, our purchase and sale agreement, and they just combine everything to one. Well, for us to upload for compliance, we need to separate this out. So when you open up the document, there's a um, icon called document actions in the top right hand corner. That's a piece of paper with the corner dog eared, select that. And then you can select split. And this will show quick uh, previews of the pages. So, over here on the left hand side, let's say we want to do pages one through two, and we'll do um, fake doc one. And then we want to add another document, so we'll do just page three. And it highlights the page so I know exactly what I'm doing. Or I'm adding this can be uh, fake doc two. And then we'll do add document, and this will be fake doc three, and this will be page four. And so if you have um, a PDF that has 40 pages in it, you could split that up into as many documents uh, as you need. And then I will click save. And the page will reload. I'll scroll down. And now I can see I have 
fake doc one, two, and three, and it split all those documents up. So that's gonna be how you can split a huge PDF that you receive from a co-op agent. Now, I, have, I combined all the listing agreement documents for my clients, and I wanna download it to send them as a PDF and an email rather than just the email they got directly from DocuSign. I select it, and then uh, the toolbar, toolbar appears, and I click download. And just click download, and it's that easy. So now we have all of our documents, we have our signed listing agreement, we have our purchase and sale. Now we have to upload these documents into command for compliance review. So I'm gonna go back into command, and now I'm in the documents tab, and this is a listing, so it's gonna show me all the listing options. So I can, there's a couple ways I can do this. I can click on add a file here, and then I can select DocuSign, and then it's gonna show me a list of all of my documents. Now I created folders, so I could select the different folders, um, but I'll just scroll through here. You can see it's gonna show all the documents, so this is why I was saying it's when you start getting multiples of documents, you'll wanna archive the old one so it doesn't get too confusing. So I'll scroll through here, exclusive seller listing agreement signed. Perfect, dot PDF, and I can click assign. Now we have a handful of documents that we wanna attach, so I don't wanna go through here one by one and click add file. So at the top, I can do attach multiple files, and then I'll select DocuSign as the source, and then I can scroll down uh, to each one of the relevant fields and I can select from the drop down menu. This is community association disclosure. So I will scroll down to where I find the community association disclosure signed and click on that and sellers property disclosure. So I'll just scroll through um, until I find the property disclosure. Sellers property disclosure signed, signed. So that's the one that I know that has that additional text. We don't have blood-based paint, and then the Rawls Group Affiliated Marketing. So let's scroll down. It's wire fraud. Maybe at the top, there we go. Affiliated Marketing, signed. And then the Rawls Group, <laughs> Wire Fraud Prevention, and then click Attach. So that's all of our listing agreement documents. And then I can come over to my under contract documents and I can add my purchase and sale, select DocuSign. And this is gonna be that main benefit that you're gonna have of having uh, DocuSign and command linked because it just saves a lot of time from having to go through and download each individual document and then uploading back into command. So I select purchase and sale agreement, sign, assign. And now that um, adds it there. So I don't know what that, Please try to upload your document again. All right, well, it looks like we're good to go. It looks like I can click on this and it's gonna show me a preview of the document and that's how I know this is correct and good to go. So once you've uploaded all of your listing agreement documents or your purchase and sale, you'll wanna click on submit to MC and that's gonna to submit to Market Center and that's what's gonna notify Lynn that there's, a docu there's contracts, listing agreements for her to review. Once you go binding, you will then submit a green sheet. Well, I don't know exactly what your process is, so I don't want to speak to that. I just to <laughs> defer uh, to Stacy for Atlanta Perimeter on what your next steps are. But you'll want to submit to MC, and then Lynn will give you any feedback. Um, there'll be a little, if it's the document is um, not approved, there'll be a little, a little square here with some feedback of what changes you need to make. All right, so we just breezed through a ton of information, especially in the last couple of minutes. What questions do you have? Uh, anything you wanna see again? I know we're a little bit over, so I appreciate your patience. Um, but what, yeah, what else can I help you with? What questions do you have um, from this training? You can unmute yourself or type in the chat box. All right, so we have a couple chats. Um, is there a listing without looking at all the forms to see what needs to be signed? Uh, Donna, I don't understand your question. Is there a listing without looking at all the forms to see what needs to be signed? Uh, 
reach out to me afterwards, Donna, and we can talk through that question um, to make sure you have all the information you need. Well, thank you guys so much for joining. I appreciate you taking your time out of your morning. As you're going through and you're playing around in DocuSign, do not hesitate to call me, text me, email me with questions. Um, there's a definite learning curve to DocuSign. It's not as intuitive as dot loop. Um, and it, there's a lot of information. It's very procedural. So reach out to me because I don't ever want technology to be in the way uh, or what stands in the way of you and your next deal. So um, the best way to contact me, I will let me put my email address uh, right here in the chat box. So there's my email. Oh, do, 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 let me select everyone. And then here is my cell phone number. So those are information's in the chat box. I'm here. You can call me, text me on the weekends, whatever. I'm always here to help. Um, it's real estate, 24-7 business. So, um, so Sean, in terms of getting to know what you need to do to receive your check, that reach out to Stacy about that, um, and she'll be able to help. So everyone have a great rest of your day, and I will hopefully speak with you soon. And then I have DocuSign office hours this afternoon from two to three. So if anything pops up over the next couple of hours that you just want to walk through again or ask any additional questions, I will be on Zoom to answer those. So thank you.